And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed. To you it shall be for food. Genesis 129. Man did eat angels' food. He sent them meat to the full. Psalm 78, 25. Everyday Manna with Lisa. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Everyday Manna. I have done this program. I'm now in my 11th year or so of doing Everyday Manna, and through the years, the number one requested style of food that I get is either diabetic, low carb, whatever you wanna call it. There's no such thing as I've learned as a diabetic diet plan, so to speak, but there are things that you can do to reduce the number of carbohydrates that you are consuming because carbs in your body turn to sugars to burn for fuel. And if you have diabetes or prediabetes, or if you just want to uh, lose weight, you know, there's a, a, the big diet now is the ketogenic diet or keto, which actually Mike and I do eat ketogenic. So we eat, the, on the daily, we eat low carb ketogenic. So I wanted to show you some of the recipes that I cook at home. They're fabulous, they're easy, they're very low carb, but the taste is there. I'm not willing to give up good food, but you have to find alternative ways of cooking. So in terms of diabetic, keto, whatever you wanna call it, now the ketogenic diet is higher in fats because you replace your uh, fuel with fat instead of carbohydrates. So you do increase the fat and decrease significantly the carb count. So I've had to do some massive research and scour the grocery stores looking for things that I can use in my everyday life to cook the way that we want to eat. And it has worked because I know Mike, my husband, has lost around 40 pounds in about four and a half months or so. I've lost around 25, between 20, 25 pounds. And for the first time in my life, my labs were normal. So I'm a firm believer that you can eat low carb and it will be delicious. Now, some of the things that I have found that work, you know, you have to basically give up your bread, give up pasta, that one's the hard one for me, and uh, potatoes. I'm not really missing the potatoes as much as I am the pasta, but I'm still working on that one. However, bread is no longer a problem. In the grocery store, now I find this at Food City, my local Food City, there is a brand of bread uh, called Sola, S-O-L-A. And Sola bread is a low carb alternative. It is delicious, tastes wonderful. I'll toast it sometimes and put butter and cinnamon on it. And it just is fabulous. So it comes, uh, I have found three different types. I got two today. This one is the deliciously seeded and this one is sweet and buttery. Now I wanted to show you what a slice of bread looks like. I mean, that's bread. That is just a wonderful slice of bread. This particular one, the net carb count is four grams of bread, as opposed to a slice of white or wheat bread that you know has a ton more carbohydrates in it. This is a net carb of four. How you arrive at your net carbs is you look at the total carb, I'll just show you. On this one, it's eight grams total carbohydrates, but it has four grams of fiber. So you subtract the fiber from the total carbohydrates and that's how you arrive at net carbs. Now, I have done a lot of research and a lot of people say that you can also subtract out the sugar alcohol content. I don't do that in my own day-to-day -day, um, carb count. I, I just don't. I, I don't 
calculate that into anything. I just strictly go with total carbs minus the fiber. This is delicious, and you can eat it as a sandwich. You can have it as, you know, toast or whatever you want. You can use it as a binding agent for, um, you know, a meatloaf or meatballs or something like that. And we're going to be using a little bit more of this later. Some of the other things that I have found that I'm using is coconut oil. Now, olive oil, which I already use, is extremely healthy. It's very, very heart healthy. It, you know, it, it, it does not have any carbohydrates. Neither one of them have carbs in it. Um, your fats don't. But the coconut oil adds, you know, a teeny, tiny, tiny little bit of flavor, I think. Just a minuscule amount. Not overwhelmingly coconut like you would think. Um, but it also is, you know, it's good for you and it's an alternative maybe to olive oil if you don't want to use olive oil all the time. They're, they're pretty interchangeable, but I just wanted to show you the coconut oil. And ladies, by the way, this, make, this coconut oil makes a great eye makeup remover. Just another side note. Another thing you're going to have to look at is um, sugars. You can't use regular sugar. You can't use brown sugar. You can't use the regular granulated sugars and powdered sugars. Luckily for us, there are alternatives that are um, derived from fruit and plants. This one that I use a lot of is erythritol, and you uh, has no carbohydrates in it. You use it equal parts to powdered sugar. This is the powdered form. It comes in two, three different kinds, but this is the powdered equal parts measurements. And then I have just found a brown sugar replacement. This is Swerve, and this is measures cup for cup like brown sugar. There's no car, well, there's four grams of carbs in um, this, but it's negligible in terms of, because you're not going to just sit and eat a whole tablespoon of sugar. You're going to, you know, sprinkle it over top. The erythritol has four grams. So you're dealing with a little bit of carb here, but you're not just eating it like you would regular sugar. So these are a couple of good alternatives. We're actually going to use this today on top of one of my favorite keto recipes, and that's strawberry shortcake. And then, you know, Truvia, Stevia, this is derived from the Stevia leaf. So it is much more um, the glycemic index, which is how you measure your, your blood sugar counts much more friendly for that. So I do use this quite a bit for lots of different things. Just kind of wanted to show you a couple of things that I do use at home. These are actually from my house that you can bring into your home. The Sola brand, I'm starting to see a lot of stuff. Uh, the granola, it's got a granola. It's got some um, dairy products and that kind of thing. So keep your eye out for the Sola brand if you are a diabetic or if you just want to eat keto or low carb because it really is good. It's not gummy, it's not eggy, it's just delicious. So I'm gonna put these things away. When I come back, we're gonna make a chicken dish, a roasted broccoli, and oh my goodness, strawberry shortcakes that are carb friendly. I'll be back in just a few minutes. Alrighty, now let's get started on some cooking. We're cooking low carb today, and I made this a couple of nights ago at home. I thought, I'm just going to try this, and let me tell you, it is absolutely scrumptious. So we're going to make it today. I've got a baking dish that I've lined with nonstick uh, cooking spray. Now, I've got a baggie. You can't, if you're eating low carbohydrate, you cannot eat the flour. I mean, you can't coat your chicken with the flour and the panko and all that, although that is delicious. We're cooking low carb today. Pork rinds, and I know what you're thinking, because I was thinking the same thing, but I thought I gotta find a way to get crunch. 
And I've done a lot of research and everything I've read suggests pork rinds. So I'm like, okay, I'll try it. Let me just tell you, it is delicious. So I have one bag of just plain pork rinds. Whoops, excuse me. And I've got my meat mallet here that I'm going to just crush these up. Now, you could use your food processor to grind them up if you wanted, but I'm just using the bag, it's easier. Really is good. It doesn't taste like what you are imagining. It, it's really very, very good. My boys liked it. Matter of fact, we're eating dinner, and they're talking about, oh, mom, that would be good with you know, mozzarella cheese on top to melt down over it. You can have all of that you want if you're eating low carb or keto. So, and I was like, that's how recipes are developed. You start out with a basic recipe and then you springboard it with other things. So there are my crunched up pork rinds. Now, if you've got some that are, you know, bigger pieces, that's okay. That just adds texture and flavor. I also have here two eggs that I need to crack into my bowl. I'm making a breading station. And another staple, especially for ketogenic, is heavy cream. And I just pour a little bit of heavy cream into that. And I mix it all together. Break the yolks, kind of mix that together because you're going to use that as the glue, if you will, to put the chicken to get that to where the pork rinds, crushed up pork rinds, will stick to the chicken. Just feed it together. It'll be a thicker mixture uh, than if you used milk because of the, um, the cream. Milk does have a lot of carbohydrates, so it's not, it's not diabetic friendly and it's not ketogenic friendly. But you know, if you have almond milk, you could use almond milk or you know, those kinds of things that would work. I like the cream myself. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt to my breadcrumbs. I'm also gonna add some dried rosemary. You could add any flavoring that you want to this. I'm gonna add some pepper, because I like pepper. Mix all that together. This really is so easy. Then take your, I've got boneless, skinless chicken breasts here. I'm gonna trim that little piece right there off. I have six. Take your chicken, dip it in the mixture drain off any of the excess, and then coat it, and you'll need to pat it, coat it with the pork rinds, and then lay it in your baking dish. Okay. Just crunch them up as you go. It's a messy job, but that's okay. Tastes good. Okay. So line them up in there. You could also use a baking sheet if you wanted to. When we first started eating low carb, uh, Mike and I both were, you know, pre-diabetic, and, and I eat healthy. For the most part, honestly, I eat very, very healthy. But, you know, as you get older, a lot of times those things happen. So Mike actually is the one who watched a documentary on the, this particular diet that we eat, the keto diet, and he said, watch this, and I did, and I was fascinated. And I thought, okay, I'm gonna, we can try this. And so I you know, did research, because you gotta know what you're doing. And I you know, cleaned out our pantry, saw what we had, what I needed to fill in the gaps, and just slowly but surely, I've you know, found things here and there. Everything's available online. If you can't find it at your local grocery store, I promise you, you can find it online. And I bought some things, and we started, and I went about a month after 
changing the way I ate, went to the doctor for my physical, my checkup, and I've battled high cholesterol my whole adult life, all of it. And I am about out. I'm going to have to steal from some of the others to get you coded here, mister. That's okay. We can do that. So I've battled that my entire life. And I have my labs done. And for the first time in my adult life, my levels were normal across the board, including my A1C. It went down from 6.5. Five, I think it was, to uh, 5.4. So I, I'm just convinced. I, I am, I've seen the results with my own self. So I know that eating low carbohydrate will help. It's, it's choice. You have to make that choice. And you really have to invest time into doing your own research. Now, I'm going to top that with a little bit of grated Parmesan cheese. I didn't want to put my fingers down in there because I've got chicken all over me. All right. I'll just have to wash my olive oil bottle. And then drizzle it with olive oil. Or you could melt some coconut oil and drizzle that over it. Either one would work. You could top this with some Parmesan or mozzarella cheese after it's cooked. You could add some red pepper flakes. You could add anything you want. I've got my oven preheated to 375 degrees. I'm just going to pop this in the oven. And then when I come back, we're going to start on some strawberry shortcakes. I'll be back in just a minute. All right, now our chicken is in the oven and we are gonna make one of my, if not my favorite dessert. I absolutely adore strawberry shortcakes with the biscuit type shortcake. I love it and I thought, oh, I cannot <laughs> give that up. So, found another way. In this bowl, I have almond flour and it's just fine like regular flour. And so we've got that in there. I'm going to add a little bit of salt, a little bit of baking powder, and a little bit of our powdered erythritol instead of sugar. We're going to mix that all together. So good. I cannot tell you how delicious this is. It, you just, this is one of those you just really, really, really need to try. Especially if you are a diabetic and need to, for health reasons, cut out the carbs. I think we all need to reduce our carbs, to be honest with you. I'm, I'm learning. I've got one egg that I'm going to, hopefully, get cracked. The eggs lately have had the toughest shells on them. I don't know why. They're so hard, but they are. I'm going to use my itty bitty whisk because I like to kind of beat that up a little bit. Add a little bit of vanilla, real vanilla, and pour that in there with two tablespoons of heavy cream. Depending on the humidity of the day, you know, same applies here. Might need a little more heavy cream, we'll see. And some melted butter. Mix all that together and it will form a dough. Now these don't rise up real thick like your traditional um, shortcakes made with flour and, you know, the 
biscuit mix that we've made before, but they're really good. They are so delicious. I've got my baking sheet here that I've lined with parchment paper. And I have two spoons. And what I like to do is just put a spoonful and use the other spoon to kind of knock it off there. Kind of pat it out a little bit. This makes four good size shortcakes, which serves me for dinner and breakfast the next morning. <laughs> you can double this recipe if you want to make more. I love strawberry shortcake for breakfast. It really rarely ever lasts that long, to be honest, because Mike and I both really love this recipe. I'm not a big dessert person. I don't eat dessert every day. But when I want it, I want it. But I want it to be healthy. Now, I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of my brown sugar substitute because traditionally I like to top these with the uh, sugar in the raw, but that's pure sugar. So we're not doing that today, but we are going to get that crispy con kind of brulee type flavor from the brown sugar. Now, uh, you need to bake this at 425 degrees. No, excuse me, that's the broccoli. 375 for about 15 minutes. So we're just gonna put this down there with our chicken, okay? Now, I have here some delicious strawberries that we've just, you know, washed and sliced into pieces. And I like to taste them. Mm, that's so good. Berries are allowed on keto. But I want to add a little bit of sugar, my powdered sugar, because it's, it's called macerating your berries. That will bring out some of the liquid from the strawberries, and it makes a sauce, which is delicious on your um, shortcake. Need a little spoon spoon here that doesn't have cream on it. So let's get that. I'm going to add probably about a fourth of a cup because those are sweet berries. They don't need much. I really just want that to macerate with the berries and bring out some of the sweetness. I'm also going to add a pinch of salt. I find the salt brings out the sweetness. I don't know how that works. I'm sure it's just a chemical reaction, but it does work. You can already see how they start forming a glaze, and it makes its own glaze. We're just going to put these in the refrigerator until the shortcakes are done, the chicken's done. I'm going to take a quick break, clean up. When I come back, we are going to make a side dish, roasted broccoli. I'll be back in just a minute. Alrighty, now for our side dish, we are going to make a roasted broccoli. This is the coconut oil that I showed you in the beginning, the solid. I just melted it in the microwave, and this is a couple of tablespoons. I don't know that I need it all. Yeah, I probably do. It's heart healthy. A little bit of red pepper flake, some salt. I use pink Himalayan salt quite a bit too. Still like my kosher though. A little bit of pepper, not too much because we are gonna use some red pepper flakes. Because I like red pepper flakes with my broccoli. Just toss that all together and pop that in a 425 degree oven for about 10 minutes, 15 minutes at the most until it starts to get good and golden. Be back in just a second.
Okay, now I want to show you a couple things. Here is our final uh, meal, our chicken that we baked it for about 25 minutes or so. It is so good. So that's our pork rind crusted chicken with our roasted broccoli that we mixed in melted olive oil, salt and pepper, and some red pepper flake. You can season that up any way you want. You could sprinkle a little bit of parm on that if you wanted to. And here's our shortcakes. And the, I told you, they don't really rise that much, but mm, the flavor's fabulous. The way I like to do it is just put one of them down on a plate. Now, I want you to look. See the, the juiciness of our strawberries? That's because we macerated them. So take some of your strawberries. Make sure you get that sauce. The best part, one of the best parts, you get to use whipped cream. You can make your own out of the whipping cream if you want, but honestly, this stuff is just so easy and it's pretty. So we just put some whipped cream on there and you've got a delicious, very, very low carb meal here. You've got chicken, which really has no carbs because we used the, um, the crushed up pork rinds. Our broccoli, just no carbs, basically. Maybe one, maybe one on this plate. And then our wonderful special occasion, delicious strawberry shortcake. You know, that probably has about, I don't know, maybe five grams of carbs. For that, I'll take it. So there you go. There is a quick and easy, delicious, low carb slash ketogenic meal that you can cook in your home and stay within your limits of your carb counts or your your keto however you want to do it thank you for joining with me and i will see you next time we're going to do some more low carb on everyday manna Thank you for watching Everyday Mana with Lisa. This program is made possible by viewers like you. Your support is continually needed to keep Christian programming on the air. Please.